Welcome back to No BSTS episode 34. And in this one, by viewer request, we're taking a look at TypeScript decorators, not just how to use them, but how to implement them. And of course, at any point along the way, if you like the video, be sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions, be sure to comment in the comment section down below. Let's jump right into it. Okay, so what are decorators? Well, let's take a look over the TypeScript documentation, scroll down a little bit, and we can see some decorators being used here. They're the generally the at stuff that go ahead of a class or a method in this case, or a property within a method. If you're looking at something like Nest.js, you'll see a lot of these kind of decorators being used and they're super cool. But one caveat, you can only use this for class definitions. You can't use this for functions, kind of a drag, but there you go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and use this little piece of code over here. It's basically some code that we want to go and get the timings off of. So we're going to go and build some decorators that allow us to say we want timing metrics on this particular method. We want it rolled up at the class level and we want to be able to mark specific parameters as ones that we should save when it comes to saving the performance data. So all kinds of cool stuff around performance. All right, let's copy in this code and then I'm going to go into my TMP directory and no BSTS. And I'm going to make a directory for no BSTS 34. And I'll just bring up VS code. Okay. And in this directory, I'm going to do a yarn init dash Y to create a project. I'm going to add TypeScript and TS node in development mode. And then I'm going to initialize the TS config by doing npx tsc and then init. And that's going to create a TS config file. Now, there are a couple of things from the documentation that we know we need to enable right away. So let's scroll back up to the top here and we can see that we need to have it on ES5. Turns out we're on ES5 already, so yay. And we also need to do experimental decorators. So let's scroll down here and there's experimental decorators. We'll just enable that. And then one more thing I know I need to do is go back up to here to lib and set this to DOM and ES next because there's some performance stuff that I know we need. So set that up and this is probably good to go. I do think I need to go and add in the types for node because we are going to be using perf hooks and it, TS node doesn't know about them until you actually add them. So let's go and do yarn add and then types for node. Again, in development mode. Okay, that's good, cool. So let us go and create a new file called index.ts, which has our code. And we'll take a look at what that code does. So up at the top, there's a little delay function. Basically, you give it a time to milliseconds and then some data that it's gonna return after that certain number of milliseconds as a promise. So it creates a promise and then it sets a timeout for that amount of time. And when that timeout fires, it then resolves that promise with that data that you give it. And it's a nice generic function. So cool, strongly typed, that's great. And then down here, we've got our users class, which has two methods on it, get users and get user, both of which are async methods. Get users, it just returns an empty array after a second and get user returns a, an, an object with ID, with a given ID, after 50 milliseconds. So these are basically just tests, right? And then at the bottom here, we got a function that's basically gonna run this stuff. So it's also an async function that we then run and it's going to initialize a new users object. It's gonna go and get a user number 22. It's then gonna console log that out. It's gonna get another user and it's gonna get all the users. So basically we wanna find out what, how long did each one of these take? Kind of know, but we want to go and create some methods for that anyway. So let's go and bring up our console and then let's run it. Just make sure that it works first. Nice. Okay. So we got the console log as we would expect. Awesome. So now we want to go and create some decorators that allow us to say that we want performance metrics on get user and get users. So first off, let's create a new file called perf decorators. All right, and then we're gonna go over here and scroll down to method decorators. 
and see how we're going to create a method decorator. So it's got an example here for a decorator called enumerable, which takes a value. So that's that false right there. And then it re returns a function. And in this case, it's just marking that function. But what we're going to do in our case is we're actually going to wrap that function and then start a timer before the function, the method runs, and then run the method, get the data back, and then stop the timer and see what the difference between those two timers are. And that'll give us our overall timing. So let's copy and paste that into this perf decorators. And we're going to call this one timing. Right now, it's not going to take anything like that, any value. Uh, but what we are going to do is we're going to get the method. And where that's stored is on descriptor.value. And then we're going to replace descriptor.value with our function. So we're going to say that descriptor.value is a new function. It's an async function. And it takes a set of arguments of any type. All right, the next thing we need to do is run that original function. So we need to get the output of that. And we need to await our call to value, where we do value to apply. And then we give it this, which is the object it's supposed to be running against, and then the arguments. And then we return the output of that. Okay, so with that done, we need to export timing and then import it over here. And then add it to the methods that we wanna check. So we're gonna do the timing on this guy and we wanna do the timing on this one. So let's give that a try. And then we'll go over to the console and make sure it all still works. Okay. Yeah, it looks to be still working, so we haven't broken anything. That's a good thing. But we do want to find out how long those took. So let's go and import performance from perfux. And then we need to start a timer before we call it, and we'll call that start. And we'll get the now, basically the value of the time at this exact point. And then we'll get the value at the end. And we'll do a console log of the delta between those two. Okay, let's run this again and see how it goes. All right, looking good. So we got 55 milliseconds for that first user ID, 50 milliseconds for the next one, and 1,001 for the get users, which is pretty much aligned with what we're seeing in here for the delays. So there is some fuzziness in those delays which is what we're seeing down here. The timing is right. Timing calculation is great, but the actual problem there is, is the timeout is actually not as granular as we think it is, which is fine. That's not really the point of all this, but this is good stuff. This is showing us how to make a method level decorator just like that. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is gather up all this data. So we wanna create a class level decorator that allows us to say, this class is going to go and gather all of those metrics and put them into a an array that tells us at the end, these are the methods that you called and then here's how long that they took. Okay, so let's go take a look over at the documentation and take a look at class decorators. And in particular, I wanna want, grab this one called reportable class decorator because what it allows us to do is inject new stuff into our class. So we're gonna create something called log timing. In this case, we're gonna return a new class that extends the original class that we're given, but adds on a timings array, just like that. And let's export this and then make sure that it works. So let's go and bring it in over here and then use it, log timings, cool. Now let's try it out. And then one thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go and see if that has that array. So we'll do console.log users.timings. And here's one of the hidden gotchas. We don't actually add on anything to the type. So TypeScript's not aware that we did this. So we need to do TS ignore in here to basically say, yeah, we know it's there. So we'll do this. And what we expect to see is an empty array 
And yeah, cool, we got it. So we're injecting an empty array now into our class definition and that's awesome. So now we need to go use that. So let's go and look down here and say, okay, cool. If we had on this an at timings, uh, timings like that, and we'll deal with that TS error in a second, then we're gonna go and add on timings into there. Otherwise, we will just console log it out. So let's do this.timings dot push and let's see we'll give it the property key so the method is the property key and then the time that it took is n minus start but we got to deal with this timing thing so how do we do that well we need to basically say that this is that this is an object that has timings on it at the very least that's all that we care about so what we could do is just coerce this we can say that this is an object and we know it has timings and it's just an array of unknown And we can coerce that twice by just pasting that in there. And let's give that a try. Awesome, very cool. So this is actually telling us now that we made three calls to this class, get user, get user, and get users in that order. And here are the times that we got back. So that's actually really cool, honestly. Okay, so uh, let's make it a little bit better. Let's go, just go make an interface for this. And we'll say it's a, a this with timings. And we'll give it that definition. And then we'll, now we don't have to actually be so messy in the code. There you go. Okay. So if we look back on what we're getting out here, so we're getting the method, we're getting the time, but it might be in some cases important to know what the actual parameters coming into that method were. So let's go and take a look at a parameter level uh, decorator. We'll create one called important that basically allows us to say, hey, this value is important. Be sure to log that as well so that I know like which, which user you're asking about. Maybe that's the performance problem. Okay, so let's go and take a look at our documentation and then take a look over at parameter decorators. And they've got a nice little one in here called validate. It's got some really cool implementation. So I'm just going to go and grab most of this. And I'll pop that in there. And we'll call this important. So we're going to have a, a way to say that this this value in, is important. And we've got this reflect metadata library that we need to bring in. So let's go and yarn add that. Okay, cool. And what are they doing in here? Okay, so they're getting a list, a, a numeric list of all of the indices of the parameters that this particular decorator is attached to. So, okay, we're gonna call that important. And I say this is an important metadata key and there's so they're storing this on the metadata. So we'll go and bring that in there like that. And this is actually good. So we're gonna start off with, with nothing like that. And they're just gonna go and add on the parameter index of each of the parameters that has important listed on it. So let's go take a look over here at, and bring that in. So important. And we'll just say that the ID here is important. Okay. And then how do we go and get this metadata at runtime? because we're, we're defining it here, but we're not actually using it. So if you look down here, this is where they get it. So we'll go and grab this. Okay, scroll down here and paste it in. And grab this new metadata key. So all we want to really do is just get this argument right here with that parameter index. So we know that we got our, our important parameters and we'll change that name in a second. We want to go and push in, let's see, we'll call this important params and we'll make it an empty array. And then we'll just push into important params that argument. Okay, and we'll make this an array of unknown and we need to be in that args. Cool, this is looking good. And just to be good, we'll call this uh, important parameters just to match that. 
All right, and then the last thing we gotta fix up is the property name, which is actually in this case, the property key. All right, and then we'll go and take the important params that we got, and we'll add those onto that object down there. And then let's try and run this. So let's do MPX TS node. So this is so cool. Okay, let's take a look at the report that we got back. Very neat. Okay, so we're saying get user took 53 milliseconds and it had 22 is the first value and then 42 is the second value. That is just super cool. I love it. Okay. Okay, so one last thing before we go, I want to go and try and add on a method onto our class. So I'm going to create one called print timings. And it's just going to be a very simple method that does a console log of this dot timings just like that. And it's basically what we were doing before. We're just going to do it as a method. So let's do users dot and then give it question mark dot, which basically says only do this if this method exists, print timings. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's try this out. So one last go. Very cool. Nice works just fine. Okay, so what have we learned? Well, we've learned how to go and add uh, decorators to not just the class, but also the method and also onto parameters. Uh, you've seen that you can go and add on parameters to each one of these things to make them kind of more customizable. If you like, that's awesome. And then we've learned a little bit about how to go and add data onto the metadata of a class, as well as how to go and wrap a method and do some performance metrics on it. So really cool stuff. All right, well, I certainly hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down in the comment section down below. In the meantime, of course, feel free to hit that subscribe button and subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this.